I'm Jason Keaton at SP Grid, Harvard Medical School. Uh, so thank you for joining us today for our webinar. Um, a couple of announcements. Uh, the first is that, uh, let's see, I think our webinar schedule for this summer is pretty light, but we're always adding to our uh, SP Grid TV channel. So uh, even webinars that we haven't um, done live, we've recorded speakers speaking here at Harvard, and um, we're, we're constantly updating those, so make sure you tune into that. Um, with that, uh, let's get started. Uh, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Zheng Jun Lu from Columbia. Zheng Jun is going to be talking to us today about DSSR, a new 3 dna program for defining secondary structures of RNA. So uh, start whenever you're ready, Zheng Jun. Hi, Jason. Yeah, so it's really my great pleasure to be here. So before getting started, I would really like to acknowledge SP Grid. So SP Grid is beneficial not only for end users, but also for developers like me. So as a specific example, the DSSR Linux and Mac OS 10 versions actually were compiled on SP Grid. So I would like to mention that this work would not have been possible without the NIH funding support. And I would also like to acknowledge Dr. Wilma Olsen and Dr. Harman Bosemarker for their mentoring and collaborations. So over the years, 3DNA and the DSSR have benefited greatly from user feedback. So I really enjoy interacting with the users. So if you have any questions, just don't afraid to ask. So finally, I would like to thank you for your participation. So here is the outline of my talk. So firstly, I would like to say a few words about what is DSSR, or for that matter, what DSSR is not. So I will then you know, go through some of the key features of DSSR, what makes it unique. And in the end session, I will give you a live demo which shows three interfaces. The major one is a command line interface, and there is also a web interface. And recently, there is an integration of DSSR into GMO. So, what is DSSR? So if you are familiar with DSSP for protein secondary structure analysis, you won't be far off in guessing what the DSSR is about. So for DSSP, you're starting from a protein three-dimensional structure, and then you derive the alpha helices, bed sheet, and various turns and loops. DSSR, similarly for DSSR, you starting from a 3D coordinates of an RNA structure, then you find the base pairs, not just the Watson Creek, but non Watson Creek, so called non canonical base pairs, and the helices, stamps, various loops, and many other structure features that we will see in the literature. And I would like to emphasize that DSSR is an annotation tool. It doing structure analysis. It does not do any prediction or energy calculations or molecular dynamic simulations. In essence, DSSR is just about geometry. And what you get from DSSR is what you can see, you can visualize using molecular graphic programs. So we all know RNA is single-stranded, and its structure can be divided into three levels. So here I'm using East phenylalanine tRNA, which has PDP code 1EHZ as an example. This tRNA has 76 nucleotides, as shown here. So RNA primary structure is actually this linear sequence of the bases 
There is four canonical words, A, C, G, U, we are all familiar with. But there are also many so-called modified nucleotides. The modification could be on the base, the sugar, or the phosphate. In this sequence, I just show the modified one as right in right. RNA can fold back on itself using you know, complementary watson crick bit pairs. And this led to the so-called second structure. Once you have the so-called, we are all familiar from the textbook that tRNA have a so-called clover leaf second structure, which contains four stems and three helping loops. In the middle is the so-called junction loop. The second structure has its act in three-dimensional space and to define the so-called tertiary structure. The tertiary structure, as we all know from textbook again, is so-called L-shaped. How RNA fold from the two-dimensional space in the three-dimensional space is a very challenging task. It's the so-called RNA folding problem. It's largely unsolved. However, DSSR work in just the opposite direction. We started from a three-dimensional structure and try to design the secondary structure components. And along the way, DSSR also categorized many other structure features of 3D DNA, of three-dimensional RNA. So the starting point of a DSSR analysis is to identify base pairs. I can find base pairs from so-called three-dimensional coordinates is actually harder than it appears to be. The conventional method is just using hydrogen bonding. So this, given the chemical structure of the bases, and you can identify the donors and acceptors. And by matching the donor acceptors, you define a base pair. And if you given ACGU in their so-called standard chemical structure, you can actually enumerate all the possible hydrogen bonding interactions. Around 30 years ago, Sanger listed 28 possible base pairs with two hydrogen bonds among the base atoms. But this simple hydrogen bonding based scheme has very sim inherent limitations. So first to start with, base pairing is stabilized not only by the base hydrogen bond, but also by two prime hydroxyl group on the phosphate oxygen. And there are numerous bases which have only one single hydrogen bond. And as we know from previous slide, RNA have so many different modified bases. Among the 76 nucleotides in tRNA, 14 of them are actually modified. In the current protein data bank, there are around 700 modified nucleotides. On top of that, the bases can be protonated and have different tautomeric forms. Here is a ketoamino, and this could be amino-amino. And all these things can change the base pairing patterns, change the donor acceptor. So take it all, it is simply not possible to enumerate all the possible combinations. So over the years, I have came up with a so-called geometric defined algorithm for base pairs. The key observation is that all base rings are aromatic, which has a planar geometry. I define a local reference frame here. We can uniquely define its position and orientation in three dimensional space. Then we choose some very simple geometric criteria. For example, the distance from origin 
is less than certain of. If two bits are far off, it can't be a bit pair. Then there are also the vertical separation. If they are too far away vertically, it's not bit pairing. Now also we insist on the bit distance between oxygen and the nitrogen. This is a lot of potential to form a hydrogen bond. Also, there should not be you know, base ring overlap. This is to avoid stacking. The geometric definition of the base pair is just offset of the so-called conventional hybrid bond base scheme. So it started using geometric criteria to define the base pair. And then it found all the hydrogen bond patterns. And this method can identify any bit pairs that actually exist in an RNA structure. So once you have the bit pair identified, be it Watson Creek or non Watson Creek, and there is six unique parameters we can quantify the relative geometry. On the left hand side is the three translation called the shear, shred, and the stagger. On the right hand side is rotation called buckle, propeller, and opening. And it is only shear, stretch, and this opening which are most discriminative among all the different bit pairs. For example, for Walton Creek bit pair, since the parameters are defined with reference to Walton Creek bit pair, and these parameters are around zero. For the so-called GU wall bit pair, which have a shear around it, around 22 actron. For the AU Hoxstein, which have share around half, and the stretch is three and a half, and opening around 70 degrees. So here is two very common examples of base pairs. Just look at them for a few seconds to see whether you can recognize by name. Okay, so if you get the right answer, which is the right, left one is the so-called shared GA, the right one is the reverse hook CNAU. If you got the right answer, just give yourself a big hand. If not, don't worry, because DSSR can do this work for you. So in addition to our parameter, we can uniquely identify the bit pair. And it's also, DSSR also characterized bit pair by common names and also Sanger's classification of 28 hydroid bonding types and the Leontes Westhoff geometry classification of 12 classes. So once you have the bit pair in place, you can search horizontally for four hydroid bonding interaction. This allows you to find three plates, quantum plates, and even higher multi base association which are called multiplets. Human in the in the screen is an example of the large web sum subunit with PDB ID one GJ two. Look how the sugar and the phosphate are involved in the different hydrogen bond interactions. The five bases are actually nearly core planar, as you can see from the side of it. If you look vertically from a base pair, and you can find the helices, which are defined by stacked base pairs, the basic idea is actually very, very simple. On the right hand side, I use a right angular block to reference each of the base pair. For a terminal base pair, it's two nearest neighbors are on the same side. The dot product of the two vectors is positive. For middle base pair, its two nearest neighbors are on the offset side. So the dot products are negative. So we starting from one terminal base pair, we can assemble, collect all these base pairs and find the helices regardless of the base pairing type or backbone connection. We also define what I call a stem. A stem is firstly a helix. It's built on stacked bit pairs, but with two additional conditions. The first one is the mass formed by canonical bit pairs, which is Watson Creek or Volvo GU pair. 
and also with a continuous backbone. So it follows then that a helix can contain more than one stack, which are called coaxial stacking, and as we will see in the next slide. The tRNA actually contains two helices, which are composed of, on the left hand side is a D and add coding stem. On the bottom is a T stem and acceptor stem. In 2D, they may look very separate, but in 3D, yeah, each pair are co-stacking to form the two halves of the aerostate tertiary structure. So once we have the helices, we can define the various loop. Now shown here is just a very simple schematic picture to see the very diff the typical component. And for example, if hairpin loops which are defined delineated by a single step, and the bodies uh, which it have you know single strand nucleated on one strand. And the internal loops, which have separate single strand nucleotide on both strands. In the end, it's a junking loop, which are, you know, defined by several, more than three, more, three or more stems. And the second structure in the last region can be, can be represented by different representation. A very compact one is called dot bracket notation. The shown here is a 27 nucleotide this uh, RNA. On the right hand side is secondary structure. You can see that the stem and the internal loop and the hyphen loop. And for the non paired nucleotide, it represented by dot. For the base pair, it's defined by the matched parentheses. Look, make sure, uh, just for this one, there is no crossing, so this is a simple one. And there are two other very common secondary structure representation, which are called connectable format and also BP seq format. And the three DNA, oh, oh, wait, oh, sorry, DSSR in the output three separate files for each of the three representations, which can be used fit directly into VARNA program for interactive visualization. The figure on the right hand side I actually generate using this method. For simplicity, so far I have shown tRNA second structure as closed leaf structure as what you learn from a textbook. Real situation is actually a bit more complicated. tRNA actually has a first odd solder node, which are formed by G50, uh, G19 and C15, uh, C56, and which are shown as a long blue line on the second structure, which connect this DC bit pair connected the D loop and the T hyphen loop. And as shown in the blue ellipse, on the tertiary structure, this base pair is just at the elbow of the RNA structure. DSSR also can characterize RNA structures with hair, with pseudo nodes of hair order. Shown here is a very simple example which have so-called second out solder node. Note that for the set, for a solder node, instead of parentheses, we use brackets or curly brackets. Otherwise, it is impossible to draw the base pairs from the dot bracket notation. DSSR actually have many other features. And one thing is it can calculate a minor interaction, including type one or type two, and also characterize when all these miss kissing loops, U turn and kink turns, and define 
detect reverse zipper deep quantities, and no, no pairing base interaction that involves the sugar and the base and the phosphate. Also, DSSR outputs base pair morphology parameters, which are in our original 3 DNA program. And also, output backbone torch angles on our sweet names as defined by Jane Richardson lab. So with that, I will end the talk, but I will then switch to give you a live demo. DSSR actually a defined is a command line program. And it has three modes to run. The first is the command line. It not only runs on Linux and Mac OS 10 that SP Grid support, but also on Windows. If you are a Windows user, you can simply download the Windows program and run it out yourself. And there is also a web interface to DSSR. And by ex very exciting development over the past few months is to work to team with Dr. Bob Hansen, DSSR has been integrated into GMO. And I, in the following few minutes, I will give you a demo of each of these. So to start with, so let's make a new directory, which is called the left demo. And go to into direct so so far it's empty. Because DSSR is so simple to run and I will give you a quick note about how to install this program. It is very very simple. First you go to the DSSR website, just click the link and download it. Now you have this version go to its download directory and move it in the current directory. Now we have this DSSR downloaded. Note that it's not executable for what I read after the download. We just we just run CS mode command to make this executable. And after that, you can see we, we run DSSR with many V option to see the current version. So this is actually always takes to get DSSR up and running. So since we have DSSR up and running, so we can start with some very simple example. I will copy one EHAG, the tRNA, into this kind of folder. So this is the file I have in the current folder. One is DSSR itself, another is the so-called tRNA. And then you can run DSSR against this. You can run with the match edge option to give a list of how to run the program. It is actually very, very straightforward. You start with minus i, which means the import. You can use one hyphen or two hyphen or no hyphen at all, then give it a bit of a name. And then it is how to run it. It takes no time at all for words for the relatively small RNA structures. We can go over step by step what is output in this one. And another way is we can just run have an output instead of directly dump the output screen, you can also give it a name called output file. And then they will put all this output in a file called oneehd.out. And this here is the summary. From here you can see the summary. The total of 34 bit pairs and four multiple two helices and four stamps and among other features. Let's have a look of this output file. So at the very end, 
At the very top, I give a note just to show the nomenclature used in the output, which is, should be very straightforward after you go to a couple of examples. And at here, I show the command that has been used to generate the output. And I give you a list. This is a file list, when it run the program, and this are some basic information. Here you have a list of 34 base pairs. Give it a new nucleotide, the base nomenclature, and the name. Okay, here you can see this Watson Creek, Watson Creek, Warble, Revert, Hoxie, and the Sanger and the Leontis. There is a new notation we call the DSSR notation. And here you have a list of four multiplets, which is here all are, they are all triplets. The first one is U8, A14, and A21. And so far, the same for the rest. Then we have a list of the two helices. Helices one consists of 15 base pairs. This is a simple notation. And then give a list of the base pairs that compose these helices, the helix. And then we have a list of the four steps. And the first again give us simple definition of what, helix, what the stem is, is. And then I give you a list in a similar format as for the helix about all the base pairs that are in this stem. And then I give a list to call the co-axial stacks. It says helix one composed of two stems, which are number one and number four. Number one is uh, accept the stem. Number four is the T stand. And following that is a list of the hairpin, three hairpin loops. And you don't need to go to the detail, but this is the information you have if you want to look every information about what composes this hairpin loop. And that is the junction loop. The junction loop is so-called a four-way junction. It consists of 16 nucleotides, which is is composed by stamp number one, two, three, and four. And in the end, you just give you a classification of the bit of, of the structure. It says it have a certain node of the first order. This is a second structure in dot bracket notation. Note also that each of the run of DSSR give you additional output files. This is the stem and the helices, pairs, multiplets, hairpin, and the second structure in dot BPS, CIC, CT, DBN format. And you can look at this file separately. I will just give you one very simple example of DSSR, multiplets. I'm using GMO. I know you guys maybe are more familiar with PEMO, but they are the same. You can use PEMO as well. So this is one of the multiplets, which actually are triplets. Notice that DSSR identify them and, and put them in the so-called most extended top view. From this structure, you can just like see the hydrogen bond, and you can look at the next, the second, and you can also overlap them all together, so they are basically called planar. One thing about DSSR is the second structure. With the second structure in dot DBN format or dot CT format, you can use so-called VARNA program to show the, the structure directly. Let's have a look of the TRNA structure. We just go to the lab demo. And this is, uh, you can use the CT format, and this is what you get. And you can just like change the view, and you have different width instead of uh, to customize what you see. And one thing you can see, there, you can draw this, this is a standard RNA structure, and you can draw it differently. For example, in a linear fashion, and here you can see the the southern node is just like a cross. It's not nested. There is a cross of the rim 
of the arc, actually. And then also you can draw repeat pairs into different styles. You can use simple, you can use RNA Vs, and also Leontis Westhoff format. So basically, you know, once you have this secondary structure in the format, you can do whatever way you are most comfortable with. So, as you can see, running DSSR is very, very straightforward. It's also very efficient. <coughs> but for our Christian users, you may want to run a program from a command, from web interface. This is where the DSSR web interface is about. So for the web interface, you can upload the file. Let's do it again. Again from the lab demo directory. We can use EHSZ. And then once you load the file, there are several command options you can set here. For example, no pair interactions and detailed output, and then you can run. And this is very quick to get the output. Now this basic idea is the output is the same as you run or run from a command line. Apart from this file, you can also just uh, copy and paste some of the coordinates So suppose you are just in this just copy and paste. Because DSSR care only about the coordinate direct uh, record item or header item. And then you can submit this. And for this one, just like you have four nucleotides, there is no secondary structure, no bits pairs. But the basic idea is very easy. You can just upload your file or copy and paste the coordinates and get DSHR running. And finally, I will give you a demo on how to run the program through GMO. This is actually a very recent development. Let's make the screen bigger. From here, you can select, you can just load any of the PDB files. Support you got like, uh, this is just one EHSZ. And now today, you got this structure automatically. Behind the scenes, actually, this the center job to the x 3 DNA server at Columbia. And the GMO collect the output and the presence in this format. The next part about it, this, in, this integration is you can see where these stem are and where these helices are. And also look at the head, where this so called helping loop is. You may, be, you may be a bit surprised to see where the, the junction loop are. In 2D, it's just like a big circle in the middle, but in 3D, this is where the junction loop is. So they are far from a perfect rim as you are used to in a clove leaf second structure. Now here you can see your so-called the multiplates, where the multiplates in. Also, if you are familiar with the scripting of the GMO, you can change colors, for example, instead of red, you can put it into green, and to see where the components you are interested in are in the structure, interactively. So with that, I would like to stop, and if you have any questions, and I would like, I would be happy to answer them. Hi, Jason, so I'm done. Great, well, that's uh, very powerful and very fast, very speedy code. Maybe it's because your structure is 
Well, but it runs very quickly. So one question that I have is uh, for users who are uh, looking for documentation and help, what do you suggest? Where you, I know there are okay. forums, but maybe you could say a little more about that. Okay, so I know I think for most developers, who are most like to write program instead of write menus. But for DSSR, I make an exception. There is a user menu which you can download it from the DS from the 3D website, and which is 50 pages long. I spend a lot of effort. Trust me, I spend a lot of effort go through this documentation and just download this the menu and just go through it. It's very, very simple to follow. If you have any questions, you can reproduce the results, and I'll be happy to help. And you mentioned there is other support. There is an active 3D forum, which user post question. Again, you can find the page link among the 3 DNA homepage. So this is a you know, 3 DNA forum website. And for DSSR, you know, you know, when people ask a question, I, I'm actually very quick to answer them. So basically, you know, you have uh, DSSR itself very easy to use. And there is a user menu. If you have any question, there is a forum. So that's basically what I do to support this software. One thing you can be sure of, if you post a question on a 3D forum, I won't leave it more than one day to get it answered, normally within a couple of hours. It looks like the it's pretty active. Like there's you know a lot there's a lot of material there. So there should be a lot of uh, most questions I, I would think the common things are already answered and available. So that's great. So, so I what I mean is you know for DSSR, you know, it's it's some of the functionality were is original available in the original 3 DNA program. Over the years, I just noticed there are some features which are not recognized by the community. And with my current support the community, with my increased knowledge of the new class structure, I came up with this DSSR program. And I'm sure if, if one work on, if one project is involved in new class structure in any way, this should be able to find the DSR helpful in once. I have a lot of functionalities and I have present in this uh, webinar, but you know, you know, I put more effort, I put a lot of things in this app which are actually still undocumented. But if you people have any question, I will be very quick to, to, to answer that. Great. So I'll note that in the SP Grid collection, uh, the DSSR is version 1.0.3, but version 1.1.3 is available now. That is staged and ready to go out. But if anyone's listening and they would like 1.1.3 available now, just send us an email to help at SP Grid, and I'll push it out to your site today. We can push it out right away. Otherwise, you'll have it when the monthly update comes out. So uh, with that, I think uh, we'll wrap it up. Thank you very much, uh, Zhang Jun. Uh, and, uh, I'll follow up with you by email offline. Okay, thank you.